Epic Games got caught stealing from kids. Call of Duty players are demanding a feature from Battlefield 2042. One of the biggest names in gaming and programming has quit meta and much more on This Week in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here. Epic Games have agreed to pay a record-setting $520 million fine for violating children's privacy and tricking them into buying Fortnite skins. The FTC, Federal Trade Commission, took Epic to court, claiming that Fortnite's privacy agreement gave the developer the personal information of children without parental consent. They also claimed that the default privacy settings exposed children to multiplayer communication where predators and bad actors could scam them or even worse. The FTC alleged that Fortnite's UI design hid privacy controls from users while making it unclear which purchases were paid. Since the game targets children and teenagers, these problems turned into widespread complaints over the past few years from parents who discovered thousands of dollars in surprise Fortnite transactions on their credit cards. The court ruled Epic had put children at risk by exposing their personal information without parental consent and illegally cost consumers millions of dollars with those unintended purchases. The terms of the half a billion dollar settlement dictate Epic issue refunds to millions of users amounting to 254 million dollars. Epic have also made several changes to their privacy settings in the recent months. Accounts for players under 18 automatically default to the game's highest privacy settings, which also defaults multiplayer communications to nobody. Phishing, doxing, trafficking, and other illegal activities are rampant in multiplayer games like Roblox and Fortnite, whose audiences are primarily kids on mobile devices. These new default settings should help protect kids from nefarious activities while playing. Epic has also cleaned up their UI to be more more explicit about which purchases are paid. Overall, this is a big win for Fortnite mobile gamers and parents. Mobile gaming is rife with games and apps that basically become kid-friendly slot machines. Fortnite is the biggest mobile game around, so the FTC taking them to court over these issues and winning puts other developers and publishers on notice. The case also sets new legal precedents over how games and privacy settings are designed. What are your thoughts on the settlement? Do you think Epic intentionally misled kids in to spending money on V-Bucks or should parents be more engaged with the games that their kids play? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Modern Warfare 2 players are demanding that Infinity Ward steal a feature from Battlefield 2042. The Season 3 update for 2042 added a new accessibility option that basically dark mode for flashbangs. When toggled on, the game's concussion grenade blacks out your screen instead of flashing to pure white. The dark mode effect is much easier on the eyes, especially for people with light sensitivity conditions or are playing on HDR capable screens where the whites are just really intense. Considering how common flashbangs are in Call of Duty matches, this feature seems like a no-brainer. So far, a Reddit post asking for dark mode flashbangs has racked up nearly 900,000 upvotes on Modern Warfare 2 sub. As accessibility options become more common in games, it seems like dark mode setting might become very popular. In other Call of Duty news, full loadout drops are back in Warzone 2. When they first announced the new Battle Royale, Infinity Ward said the game wouldn't offer loadout drops. On launch, you were limited to buying individual guns from your existing loadouts or getting a loadout from one of the random randomly spawned drops. But the latest update for the game added purchasable loadout drops to buy stations. Most players are generally happy with this change, though there's a concern that it will turn the game back into Warzone 1's loadout dominated grind. Circling back to Battlefield 2042, the mid-season event is live. The Battle of Nordvik offers three weeks of limited time modes and unlockable cosmetics. So far, the first week's mode, Conquest Assault, has been a mixed bag for players. Next week will offer a Russian Conquest hybrid with a dash of breakthrough. The final week will add a 128 player breakthrough chaos mode. DICE also made a significant change for this event from the previous event, quadrupling the number of free unlocks available through gameplay. Doom co-creator and one of the pioneering forces behind mainstream VR devices, John Carmack, quit Meta, aka Facebook. He was brought on as an executive consultant when Oculus founder Palmer Luckey sold the company to Facebook in 2014. Facebook eventually fired Luckey in 2016, but Carmack stayed on. As a programmer, Carmack is famous for his insistence on optimization and efficiency. That's led to a legacy of titles that can run on just about anything, like Doom and Quake, which were cutting edge for their time. And in fact, many engines over time and over the years are built upon 
upon the foundations of what Quake established. Now, in particular, VR games require huge efficiency gains to run at acceptable frame rates since they render everything twice. Carmack's work at Oculus and Meta was likely instrumental in getting standalone vices like the MetaQuest 2 functional. He published his full resignation letter after various media outlets leaked parts of it. Carmack says, unsurprisingly, the issue that made him quit was a lack of efficiency. Despite his executive position at the company, his input had little impact and often took years to be implemented. He's moving on to manage his own startup. God of War Ragnarok is getting a new Game Plus mode next spring. While the game lets you keep playing after the main story concludes, you can't replay it with all abilities and upgrades unlocked. The developers will share more information about the mode as it gets closer to launch. It was a nice addition to 2018's God of War. They added it a few months after launch. It offered new attack patterns for enemies and the ability to further upgrade your gear. BlizzCon is back after a two-year hiatus. The annual gaming conference was forced to be an online-only event due to COVID in 2020 and 2021. They canceled the event for this year because of the ongoing workplace harassment lawsuit against Activision Blizzard and the associated scandal. BlizzCon is generally when the developer makes all their major announcements for new titles and expansions. It'll likely be an in-person event in 2023. The Steam Winter Sale is live. As usual, most of the year's major titles are on steep discount. There's also hundreds of indie and smaller titles on sale as well. Users can vote in the Steam Awards for categories like VR Game of the Year, Outstanding Visual Style, Best Soundtrack, and more. The winners will be announced on January 3rd. Fallout 76 seems like it's fully recovered from one of the most disastrous launches in gaming history. Reviewers generally called the game a broken mess when it launched back in 2018. Player reviews were even harsher, ranging from complaints about bugs and performance problems to missing features, underwhelming collector's edition merchandise, and much more. Fast forward through dozens of updates and multiple major expansions later, and 76 has an insane 13.5 million total players. Its average review rating is mostly positive, and it seems like the game will enjoy a healthy future with more updates and expansions. Sony released their answer to the Xbox Elite controller and similar pro-oriented controllers. The DualSense Edge offers back paddles, adjustable trigger stops, function buttons, replaceable analog sticks, and a complete key remapping. It seems like a fantastic controller right up until you get to that $200 asking price. Comparable controllers from third parties like Thrustmaster, Scuff, and Goalie Kit are cheaper while offering similar features and a wider range of options. That said, the way the Edge integrates with the PlayStation 5's remapping software and the addition of the function buttons are huge improvements over existing controller designs. It might be worth the 200 MSRP if you're the type who likes to customize their controls from game to game. Before we get on to the next story, I just wanted to take a moment to say happy holidays, everyone. I hope you've been able to have a decent 2022. Thanks for sticking around and watching my content this past year. We are going to be taking a bit of a break early next week. I may throw a stream in here or there, but for the most part, uh, you can expect a little dip in content until closer to around New Year. Again, thanks for your continued support. And of course, if you aren't subscribed yet or a channel member, those are great ways to help support this channel. Star Citizen released its Wave 1 PTU patch for the highly anticipated 3.18 update this week. This has been released to a limited access testing environment, but it's not under NDA, so tons of information, opinions, and videos are dropping about the new content. So far, the new content looks pretty fantastic, with major features like soft death, object permanence, and salvage really changing core fundamentals of the game. The developers have been releasing tons of patches this week to try and update the PTU build for a full public access, but many players don't think it's stable enough for widespread deployment. If you want to see more of my personal experience and thoughts on Star Citizen's 3.18 update, check out this video here. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys after a little bit of a holiday break. This is Level Cap, signing off.